Hey, if I haven't met you yet, my name is John. Happy Easter. It is a joy to be with you guys online like this. And God is up to brand new things. God is doing something new. God is doing some things uh, like we didn't anticipate, yet God is doing something significant, and we get to be part of it. Uh, some of you have been on road trips before. I certainly have. I grew up being on road trips. Now I got two kids, and we're, we're always driving to different places to visit family. And one of the games we like to play on a road trip is the word association game. I thought we could play it as we start Easter. And so it's a really simple game. Uh, in fact, if you're watching on Facebook live right now, you can even throw in uh, some comments what you would associate these words with. I think that'd be fun. Uh, it's really simple. It just goes like this. Someone will say the word, and then you would associate that word with a word that comes to mind. It could be a word. It could be a phrase. So, for example, we'll start with the word heaven. So what would you associate with the word heaven? You can put some comments in. Uh, some of you will, will probably write in or type in Jesus, or you might even type in eternity. If you were playing this with your family or in your living room tonight, someone might even say Lou Malnati's. I might be that, that someone. Uh, another word that, that I want to throw out is a word you're quite familiar with right now. It's really a term. It is COVID-19. What would you associate with COVID-19? Well, a lot of things. Perhaps it would be Zoom uh, or maybe it's Disney Plus or perhaps you'd associate it with uh, you had to expel your own child from homeschool. Uh, maybe, maybe you would associate COVID-19 with unexpected loss. Uh, maybe you would associate it with unrelenting fear or seemingly uncontrollable anxiety. I have another word for you. It's, it's the word that I think we need to really talk about. It's the word Easter. Uh, when you hear the word Easter, what are some word associations or phrases that come to mind? Go ahead. You can type those into the comments. Uh, some, some might be uh, peeps. Uh, or lilies, or it might even be pastels. It could be things like the Easter bunny or the Easter basket. Uh, maybe it's the phrase, he is risen, or spring has sprung, or hope heals. Uh, that's certainly a phrase that many of us have been thinking about. When you hear the word Easter, maybe you think of family. Maybe you think of worship. Maybe you go back to the day that changed everything. You'll, you'll never forget that first Easter you celebrated as a follower of Jesus Christ, freshly redeemed. And my guess is you have never associated Easter before with the term shelter in place, right? My, my guess is no one has, has typed into the Facebook Live your association of Easter being shelter in place. And yet when we look back on Easter 2020, that phrase will be associated with Easter. Uh, but the phrase that God has put on my heart to share with you today. It's the phrase that I hope that you will remember and forever associate Easter 2020 with. It's not shelter in place. It's the phrase shelter in hope. Shelter in hope. I know you're sheltering in place. We all are. The question is, are you sheltering in hope? I want to read to you from God's word. This is an amazing verse. It comes from 1 Peter 1, 3. Check, check this out. God's word says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, in his great mercy, he has given us new birth. Uh, not in your great morality, uh, not in your might, you know, not in you working your way to heaven. No, not, not in any of that. No, this was something that God did. It's in his great mercy. He has given you a new start. He's given you a new life. He's given you a new birth into, look at this next phrase, so important, just two words, into what? Say it with me, into a living hope, into a living hope. Then it goes on to say this, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The way that that verse finishes is so important. Like, how do we get this living hope? How can you and I shelter in not just any hope, but a living hope? Well, the proxy, like the, the, the means is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Friends, the, the grave on Sunday was vacant. Jesus overcame sin and death. He is risen. He is risen indeed. If there's a statement I, I want you to remember today, it's this statement. We have a living hope because we have a living God. We have a living hope because we have a living God. That statement fires me up. 
it moves me. I mean, this is the reality. Every Easter we gather and we say, he is risen, he is risen indeed. And because of that, we have a living hope. Why? Because we have a living God. Why? My hope has a heartbeat. My hope is alive. Why? Because Jesus is alive. It's not only that Jesus gives me hope, he does that, but even more than that, he is hope and he is my hope and he is our hope and he is alive. This is why the saved, although they suffer, they are also sheltered. This is why, this is why, although it may not be well in the world, it can still be well with our soul. We have a living hope because we have a living God. This is Diana's story. Diana is a single mom in our church community, and just like millions, she recently lost her job because of everything going on, yet she has not lost her living hope. This is the story of Abby and Tony Cannon. Abby has had to face this pandemic with a compromised immune system as a heart transplant recipient. I mean, talk about difficulty, and yet she is finding her hiding place, her living hope, her and Tony, the whole family, in Christ alone. This is the story of Becca and Kevin Deming. Becca is my assistant. She's been my assistant for the past two years, working remotely out of state, and, and both Kevin and Becca tested positive for COVID-19. I mean, it has been so difficult. They have suffered tremendously. She texted me yesterday saying that she hasn't left the house for 30 days. She has suffered, but make no mistake, she is also sheltering in hope. This is the story of Billy, a friend of mine, and this is a picture of his wife, Lauren, as well. Lauren, his wife, works in the hospitals day in and day out in a local hospital. But Billy, man, he, he's been through it over the past few weeks. He leads one of the most visible organizations in our community, and he's had to furlough his entire staff at Lifetime Fitness. His heart has been shattered, but he's also finding shelter in a living hope. This is the story of Amanda LeMay. She's part of our church community, and normally uh, as a mom, she, she's a wife, she's a mom, she's a nurse at DuPage Medical Group, but now she's on the front lines getting assigned to helping COVID positive patients at the McCormick Place in downtown Chicago. She is sheltering in hope. This is the story of Rich and Laurel Holt. Uh, this is an Easter they'll never forget. Their son-in-law, Mike, tested positive for COVID-19 and has literally been fighting for his life. So many of you have been praying for Mike and your prayers are making a difference. He is turning the corner, but make no mistake, this has been so difficult for the family. They have felt fear, probably like they've never felt before, but at the same time, a fortress through their living hope. And this has been so powerful. The question that I want to press into you today is not, are you sheltering in place? I know you are. The question is, are you sheltering in hope? Uh, if, if the answer to that is perhaps another question back to me saying, John, uh, how do I shelter in hope? Well, I want to share with you uh, just real quickly something that I heard recently that really impacted me. You know, we're um, in a day where we're very familiar with measurements. Uh, I brought my, my Stanley 25 footer right here. And uh, one of the measurements that is very top of mind is the measurement of six feet. There it is. And uh, six feet is the measurement because of social distancing. And certainly you're aware of it and I am, and that's really important. But if you're asking me, pastor, how, how, how do I shelter in hope? I'd like to give you a different measurement. It's not six feet. It's actually, it's actually 20 inches. And the reason it's 20 inches is because 20 inches is the distance between me standing in self-sufficiency and kneeling in self-surrender. If you want a living hope, I wanna tell you about the 20 inches you need to travel that no one can travel but you. Have you knelt before God? Have you asked Jesus to be your living hope? It's been said before that the hinge of history is the bended knee. The hinge of your history and of your eternity is your bended knee. Have you taken this posture? I have been. I mean, this has been so tough for us and for so many people I love, and this is the posture. Some of you, you've drifted, but there was a day where you received Christ as your Savior. You have this living hope. The Spirit of God is inside you, but would you come back to this posture today? Some of you, you've never 
had this posture before, before a living God who loves you, who gave everything for you, who went to the cross to, to die a gruesome death on Friday. But the story doesn't end on Friday. No, it moves towards Sunday. The grave is empty on your behalf so that you could be risen with Christ, but have you dropped to your knees. 20 inches is the difference between you know, wish and a hope that probably will fade and a living hope that will never fade. The past few weeks, we've been singing a song in my home and it talks about hope and how we have this living hope because we serve and worship a living God. I asked our team to sing it today and uh, right before they sing it, I'd love to pray for you. If you're able, would you just join me in this posture this Easter, that, that you again would make the, the 20 inch journey to the place where I believe we all need to be this Easter, surrendered in humility, desperate for God saying, Jesus, would you be my living hope? God, thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for what you've done. In Jesus, you are alive. And because of that, our hope is alive. We have a living hope. And because of that living hope, we know that we can face today and we can face tomorrow and we will be with you for eternity. And God, I pray for every person watching this right now that they would travel the most important 20 inch journey of their life to the place of surrender, kneeling before a loving, Yet, Almighty God, I ask this in the matchless name of Jesus.